Welcome to Future Talk. The Internet is one of the most revolutionary things that's ever been created. We all know how it speeded up the flow of information and enabled us to make connections that would have been impossible just a few years ago. But are all these connections really good? Is it possible to be too connected? My guest today thinks so. He is Bill David Dow, and he's written a book called Overconnected, The Promise and Threat of the Internet. He says that the speed with which information moves through the Internet can have a destabilizing effect on society and even lead to catastrophic consequences if the problem is not addressed. Bill David Dow is a longtime veteran of Silicon Valley. He's a former senior vice president of marketing and sales at Intel and also served as vice president of Intel's microcomputer division where he led the group that established the 8086 architecture as the industry standard. He later co-founded the well-known venture capital firm of Moore David Dow. He currently serves on the board of directors of several major institutions, including the California Institute of Technology and the UCSF Medical Center. He's written several other books, including The Virtual Corporation, and has a Ph.D. in electrical engineering from Stanford University. Bill, welcome to the program. Well, th thank you. I'm happy to be here, Marty. Bill, what made you decide to write Overconnected? Why was there a need for this book? Well, I was watching the Internet and knew that it was doing something very fundamental. And I wanted to understand why. And so I studied it, and I studied it, and I studied it. And I thought, here are two things that it's doing. And the first thing that it was doing was that our environment consists of the things to which we're connected. And if I change the connections, I change my environment. And if I change connections abruptly, I change the environment abruptly. And I go through abrupt environmental change. Now, if you look at it, all of our institutions, our businesses, our government, our policy-making institutions were designed around a certain level of connectivity. Suddenly, they all went through abrupt environmental change, and they were un unable to keep up. But can we absorb that? In the past, we had the telegraph, and that was a change. Then we had the telephone, and that was a change, and then television. Uh, and they were all absorbed successfully. Can the Internet be equally absorbed successfully? Well, I, I believe the Internet can be absorbed successfully, but I, I believe that the key to doing it is to realize that we've got to be more active in what we do about it because the other thing that happens in the Internet environment is that when you increase interconnections, uh, you create something called positive feedback. And what positive feedback does is it causes change to add to change. So if you think about it, if you had a checking account or a savings account as a kid, when you were paid 2% interest, that money got fed back into your account. Your savings doubled in 36 years. If you got paid 5% interest, that feedback doubled your savings in 14 years. Now, I'd like to give you an example of feedback at a 40% growth rate. In 2000, there were $60 trillion of over-the-counter derivatives in the world. And those over-the-counter derivatives were things that were really deeply involved in the financial crisis. In 2008? In 2008. By 2007, that number had grown to $600 trillion, which is 10 times the output of all the economies of the world in a single year. That compounding could have never taken place without all, all the information transfers that went on on the Internet. And we were totally unprepared for it. And so we had all kinds of bailouts associated with it. Lehman Brothers, as an example, had $980,000, 80,000 derivative contracts that were open at the time. And they could have never kept track of them or even generated them uh, without the Internet. Now, is this the fault of the Internet or the fault of faulty judgment on the, on the part of certain people where the Internet basically enabled it 
the, the internet is, is, is the great facilitator. And so it's there, but it's like everything else, it's, it's how you use it. There are responsible ways to use it, and there are irresponsible ways to use it. I remember and, that in the old days, if you wanted to borrow money, say, to buy a house, you had to look the lender in the eye. Right. And you had to be convinced that you were going to pay him back. Now you could borrow money on the Internet and never deal with an actual human being. You're absolutely right. And so one of the things that made society work, and it, it, it's very fundamental to it, is, is trust and interaction with people. And... Uh, all kinds of things work differently. Uh, everybody is very fond of talking about Adam Smith's uh, <coughs> invisible hand. And what made the invisible hand work really well was moral control. Free markets work extremely well in local environments where you and I trust one another, and I can shame you at church and things like that. And if I put you out on the street and don't, make an effort to help you with your problem, I've got to look at you in the church the next day, or I've got to have other people gossip with me about me in a so, community. So, so you're saying now the internet makes things more impersonal? You're dealing with people who you don't actually know in real life? Well, it, it, what it does is as you connect things, you tend to do something that is called externalizing costs. And the more things get connected, the more you have an opportunity to externalize these things. What I mean by externalizing costs is that, uh, for example, I smoke cigarettes, which I don't do. I get sick, but the cost of smoking is borne by the health care system, which has to take care of me. So I externalized my health care costs. And so one of the reasons why we got around to taxing cigarettes was to make the smoker pay for his own health care costs, or that was some of the, bad, the thinking behind it. And when things get connected, what happens is that frequently I'm in California and I do something that affects somebody in New York, and uh, I can, may do something to them, but I don't uh, experience the cost of doing that. And uh, this creates, as connections grow, more and more costs end up being borne by somebody else. Now you say in the book that the Internet, with the speed at which it can move information, uh, can ultimately cause really catastrophic consequences. What are some of the catastrophic consequences if uh, something isn't done to maybe rein the Internet in a little bit? Well, all right. Uh, one of the things that's happened is high frequency trading as an example. Now, stock that, trading. Stock trading, and this is where machines trade stock with other machines. And uh, uh, that was impossible to really do before the internet acted as the information backbone of the system. Today, 60% of the stocks traded uh, in the markets are traded through high speed trading systems. Uh, one of the things that happened there was that on May 6th, the Dow Jones Industrial Averages dropped by a thousand points, and uh, that uh, Procter and Gamble was selling at $62 a share that day. I think it 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 dropped down to 39, and by the end of the day, was trading back up at $61 a share. So this kind of volatility happens, and suddenly. So, so you're removing human judgment from the equation and letting machines control the economy? Well, you're letting machines game that are gaming other machines determine the price of the stock. And in the ultimate game, maybe 100% of the stocks are being traded by machines trying to outgame other machines. And so the value of the stock gets completely divorced from the value of the company. The value of the stock is determined by what one machine thinks another machine is going to do. We're going to continue our conversation in just a few minutes, but first we have a short video giving a brief history of the Internet. Let's go ahead and roll that tape. 